We've almost completed our goal of completing the basic shell of the bus. Cleaning the ceiling, the walls, the floors. All we have left to do is this little strip of floor on this side of the bus and finish up that back wall over there before we get to go on vacation. And now that we've got interior shell almost finished, it started us thinking about all the things we would have done differently knowing what we know now. I always double check the table saw numbers with the same measuring tape that I have because one thing we had a problem with was measuring tapes. Had two different measuring tapes completely different. So if we didn't use the same one every time, it threw us off. That was a big hassle. All right, now we're gonna go see if it fits. <laughs> oh, I suppose that would be easier. Does this fit? Yep. Looks good. Yay. All right, now we just gotta cut down uh, several more. <laughs> we'll do a rough count and figure it out. Which leads me to the first thing that we wish we would have known about our bus conversion. The floors. After we'd stripped our bus down to the bare metal, we wanted to put a nice strong layer of flooring in and we failed. For the first layer, we used a half inch piece of plywood and it just was not strong enough leading us to go back and put a second layer of plywood in, which was three quarters of an inch. After we skinned our bus down to the metal, it would have been much better for us to just put a three quarter inch piece of wood, roll out our Ceratec insulation, and then put in a layer of Luon. That way, we could have put these down on Luon, and it would have been a nice smooth surface. The manufacturer recommends that you put these down on a flat surface, we're putting them down on our Ceratex because that's where we're at in the build, which is one thing we would have done differently. Hi, buddy. Last floor board is in. One of the things that we really wish we had done differently is the order that we did things in. We only decided to reskin the bus and put the RV windows in later on. So we had already put in skylights and started working on Ceratex and all these things and wiring, and then we changed our plan. Ideally, we would have reskinned the bus and put those RV windows in right at the beginning, like right after the demolition. It's a lot of dirty work and it was really hard for us to kind of protect everything inside of here when we were doing that. So that's what I recommend. Don't copy us and change your plans in the middle. Do it straight after the demolition. So at one point we decided up here in the front by the stairs and this driver area, we were gonna pull up that vinyl flooring from the original bus, and it was glued on there so strong that it started tearing the wood up. We only tore the top step off, and that's where we decided to stop. But I think we got a plan. We're going to put our planks down and leading up the step so it starts to flow into the living room. These other three steps down here, we're going to do something else with. We're not going to worry about that yet because they're going to get, as you can see, like there's snow, there's mud, there's all kinds of things that end up on these steps. progress we got the wall side of the stairs going cut down to size 
back in a second. Another thing we need to do is go ahead and put the lights in, so we're going to go ahead and wire those in. Another thing that we would have done differently is we've got this single run 12 volt wire. It was so easy to work with. When we started wiring up the bus, we originally used this super thick marine wire with this extra wrap around it. And these are for our 12 volt lights. Maybe if I was in a boat, that would be great, but it was very difficult to work with. Uh, just because there's so much stripping that has to happen and you can only get so many pieces of it through conduit. The single 12 gauge, so we would just tape off the part for the black for our ground and put a little piece of red tape for our positive and it's so much easier to wire up. I just feel better if that red one's covered, you know? Yeah. It's just me. I get a little anal on uh, DC, because DC uh, has what they call a burn characteristic. <laughs> okay. AC is cyclical, right? It goes like this, but DC is <laughs> And seeing this thing could put out six amps, uh, it could be a mess. Okay. All right, ready. so you plug it in? Sure. See what's going on here? Okay, you ready? Got 12 or 13.58 volts, which is good. It's not pulling anything. Circuit two, right? That's circuit two, correct. Okay, here's the switch. Looks like so you turn the light on, and you drop down like 12.59. Okay. Yeah, you're not hardly pulling any current at all. It's good. Okay. That on the light in the closet area. We're gonna go to circuit one. Circuit one. Okay. Need these two bathroom lights. And then I've got a stand-in light for this one, because I don't have light yet. But it's going to be power for an uh, LED strip light that runs all the way down the side. What do you think? I can see the lights already. Oh, how cool what do you is think, that? Yeah? Isn't that cool? Uh, cool is that? Yeah. Right. Improve of the lighting. I do. You approve. Bring it to life. We'd be done with winter. <laughs> I'm ready for spring. How about the sun? Sunshine's nice. So the last thing we did before we went inside last night is put in some bracing and we're gonna go ahead and take them off and hope that it's stuck. So far, so good. So we're covering our floors up to protect them so that we can still work on things in the bus and not destroy our beautiful new floors. So we found a uh, very thin painter's tape that is supposed to last 60 days without leaving any kind of residue. So Don, we got 60 days <laughs> to get this bus done. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> you having some trouble? Look at my damn shoe on. This is 
is one thing that Don and I really, really wish we had is like a barn to actually park the bus in and work in it because I can't go out in the snow in shoes that I'm going to walk around in the bus so I've got to change my shoes because i got to go get something from inside and it takes five minutes to do. <sighs> Don't get me wrong, we're not ungrateful for what we have here and the ability we have here to build a bus but man, would it be nice to have a barn to work in. We've even gotten to the point where we have this private joke. When we're driving out to the hardware store or something like that, and we're out here in the country and we see a lot of barns and we're always both with our eyes. We're both following the, the barns as we drive by and we have a saying now called barn envy. But boy, it would be nice to have a barn to work in. We went ahead and bought some stair edging. This one's called Easy Install Stair Edging. It's a metal uh, corner that'll go over our step area. That looks great. Do you like it? Yeah. So last night, Don and his dad came out and they wired up all of our lights. They fit in holes, but because the bus is going to be moving, the little clips that hold it in aren't super strong, so we decided we're going to put a little bit of Seeker Flex in to glue them in, um, just to make sure they stay in, they don't fall out. Hello Ramona, I can't shake the simplest feeling beyond the ghost, we stand on the opposite shore, hello Another one of those jobs where you get Sika Flex on your hands and your gloves. And luckily, I haven't gotten any on my clothes. But that reminds me of another thing that I wish I would have known about the build. I'm not trying to be pretentious, but I've always dressed kind of fancy. And wearing work clothes every day clothes that you know will get destroyed. Mello went through two pairs of shoes. We've been through dozens of pairs of gloves, pants, shirts, and jackets. I wish I would have known I was going to be wearing work clothes for a year. And rags. We have been through so many rags. So next up we're heading to the back. We're going to finally figure out the flooring for this back hatch. In order to cut a piece of wood for a hatch, all I have to do is move all the scrap wood right here into this area so that I can get this one piece at the bottom. obviously in this build. One of the things we discovered is Ceratex and we basically learned about it from somebody else and copied what they did and how they put it onto their uh, ceiling. And so we took that same formula and it, it works. But if we were to do this all over again and start from the beginning, we would put the Ceratex in a different place. So I'm talking about how we layered our walls and our ceilings together. 
we put the Ceratex up against the metal, then we put our insulation in, and then we put our walls. We've seen from our friends LaCroix Cruiser how they chose to put the Ceratex in, and I gotta say, it's much more simple. It took a lot of cutting and gluing the way we did it, which was very time consuming. And they put insulation in first, then they did a layer of Luan, Ceratex, and Luan. So the Ceratex is sandwiched between the Luan, and then you just got big strips of it put between the, the Luan, and that made a lot of sense and takes away a lot of work of cutting and gluing, which oh, I do have some memories of how painful that was. If you're curious to see how they put their walls and ceilings together, uh, we'll put a link to their video in the description. Nice to have lights. So we kind of have an idea of what we want for this hatch and as we sort of piece it together, we're like, mm, okay, so it's not gonna look flush. We should have some finishings around the edges to make it nice. So that means we gotta go get finishings. So Don came in yesterday and worked on this backfill step area that's gonna be part of our closet. under here that we do have to make sure we leave accessible so this part is not actually going to get sealed down here's the hatch that we need to be able to access Don has put in a vapor barrier some automotive insulation our Ceratex whoops and then some wood <laughs> and it's going to be much easier to handle than that because we've also got these little boat hatch latches that we can use to lift it up and get it out the way. So it won't be secured into place. It'll just be kind of sitting here and we'll have some baskets and uh, um, in our storage on top of it that can all easily be pulled out if we need to access anything in here. On the other side, it doesn't need to be accessible. So this side is a similar thing, but it's going to be screwed down and permanently in place. We are so exhausted today. This is our last day of bus work before our mini vacation that we're taking. And I can tell you that if you can get a bus that is already gutted, go for it because somebody's already done a whole bunch of the really hard work for you and you can actually start just building out your bus the way you want it. It's better than somebody who's already um, done a conversion because then you're trying to change what they did. You can truly make it your own but you'll skip a few months of demolition and all of that crap. So that means we only got one more thing to do. If you watched the last episode you would have seen us pull out this automotive insulation from here. We're gonna put it back in. We're tracing out the, the curve again from the insulation, but again, the insulation kind of bends into the space, which the wood obviously doesn't. So it's a starting point, and then we're gonna to have to kind of cut it down, figure out the right size. That's a wrap, folks.
we decided a little while ago that we need to celebrate each little milestone we make because the sense of accomplishment at the end of the day, once you've completed a big project, is pretty cool. Like to sit here and look at what we've done and be like, whoa, this is what we built. It's yeah, pretty cool. For about an hour and a half, you can actually be happy that you accomplished <laughs> something before you start thinking about the next step. What comes next. So right now, we're not gonna think about what comes next. Yes, so. We're just gonna celebrate and Enjoy our work. Yeah, thanks Mike for the champagne. Yes. Done. And there's something else you learn for this bus fold period? Yes. Listen to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> when your wife says hire a welder. You hire a welder. When your wife says don't put duct tape on the outside of the bus because it's gonna be a bitch to get off. Yeah, don't put duct tape on the side of the bus. <laughs> Your life is much happier when you listen to your wife. So this is going to conclude season three of our Rehabitate journey. Season four will start up soon. We start building things out. We're going to take a little bit of a break now just to kind of get a little rest and rejuvenate ourselves before we jump back in. If I can get done to start thinking about what we got to do next. <laughs> We're also conveniently taking a break. Uh, going on a week vacation when it's the coldest polar vortex that we've seen all winter. But with the temperature getting down into the negatives, maybe even negative 10 with this polar vortex coming down over the next week or so, we don't know how warm we'd be able to keep it in the bus. We just have this little space heater. We might as well just take the time off. Like we're not built for this winter weather, so it seems like the perfect time. <laughs> to take a little vacation. So we're gonna take one week from publishing videos, but... We're gonna do a Q&A live stream on Sunday, February 28th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. So 2021, February 28th. <laughs> and uh, not everybody will be able to make it, like I think Australia will be asleep at that time. Sorry, Australia. Um, but you can put all your questions below in the comments uh, for this video so that we can answer them and you can watch that live stream later. Or you can just show up to the live stream and ask us your questions live. Yeah, it'll be so much fun. We've had such an incredible time connecting with everyone through comments and all. And around the world, it's been cool to see the audience around the world grow. Like we were mostly US in the beginning and we were just looking at the analytics the other day and how it's like India is like on the analytics. Cheers, India. <laughs> so if you have any questions, please leave them below. We can't wait to talk to you through that live stream when it goes live. And thanks for sticking around and going on this journey with us so far. It's been so much fun to share. We'll see you guys soon. Sorry about the noisy generator in the background of our videos right now, but that's how we're powering the heater and all of our tools, so, uh, sorry. Mm -hmm.